first win um, yeah. as your first game as head coach at Boston College. How does it feel when it's big to come against the defending ACC champs? Yeah, it's good. I mean, look, these, these guys in that locker room, um, you know, they've put a lot of work into this in the off season. you know, from winter conditioning to spring practice to uh, summer practice to uh, training camp. So, you know, I'm very proud of these guys. You know, um, they were resilient tonight to come down here against a team that, you know, really was, you know, really in, in their minds, I'm sure, had to have this win. That's a, that's a heck of a statement for BC, but it's just one win. It's only one. So we, we have to understand that, and we, we've got to be able to handle success, you, you know, as well as we handled adversity tonight. You know what I mean? Handle in the same way. So, but we're on the, we're on the right track, that's for sure. Do you mind if I get one more? Yes. Um, Trayshawn Ward, obviously, it's his comeback here. He used to be here two years ago. Yeah. Was that big for him coming into the game, wanting to be a big part of it? Yeah, I mean, you know, he's Florida State, then Kansas State. He, he's found a home here at BC. He's a, he's a really – he's a grad, grad student, uh, very bright guy, uh, practices very hard, has a very business-like approach to everything that he does, um, does a lot in the community just like a lot of these guys do. Uh, so look, I think he's he's a good fit for BC. We wish we had him for longer. We only have him for this season, but uh, but he, he had a good day today behind behind a, an offensive line that really really paved the way tonight. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. All right, we'll go to questions from Zoom. We'll start with Dan Rubin. Coach, two hundred sixty-three yards on the ground um, and five yards per carry. What was it about the the offensive line in particular that helped plow that for uh, for three guys who got seventy yards per uh, individual? Yeah, I think they communicated well. I think they knew the game plan very well. They were very well prepared by Matt Applebaum and Will Lying. They, they did a really good job. The offensive staff did a really good job. The defensive staff did a really good job. The special team staff did a good job. And the players were able to carry out that they executed, you know, which was the key. Um, and, I, you know, again, Boston College, you know, has to be known for its offensive line. We have a great tradition of offensive linemen here, and, and hopefully these guys can keep that going. They started off on a good note tonight. Kevin Stone. Hey, Coach, congratulations. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, the drive after Florida State made it 21-13, to 13, you guys responded right away. What did you see in that drive, and, and just how important was that? It felt like the turning point in the game. Yeah, that was a drive. You're right. That was a drive where we had to answer. They 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 were on a, a little bit of a roll there, and that's always a big drive. That type of drive is big in every football, every close game I've ever been associated with. You have to have an answer drive, and so um, you know our guys did a good job. They we ran the ball quite a bit on that drive, and uh, I thought the offensive line really established themselves during that drive and and give those guys you know a lot of credit. Trevor Haas. Hey, Bill, uh, you really preached up poise and consistency throughout camp. Just how about the ability to not turn the ball over and only have one penalty all night? Yeah, I thought they did a good job. Even the penalty was, um, you know, I think it was on J.J. He, look, he just got a little too close to the returner. He was down there very fast, which was a good thing to see. Uh, we'll fix that. But, yeah, I thought they played with poise. You know, even at the end there, I thought Neto Akpala did a great job of not <laughs> retaliating against something that happened to him. So, I, you know, I, I think that's got to be a big key for us moving forward. We've got to be a disciplined football team. We've got to be a team that plays with poise, a resilient team. You know, I, I believe I have a very strong belief that that helps you win football games. Sir, Rob, go ahead. Uh, you talked about quick decision making, quick throws for Tommy all, all offseason. What did you think about Tommy tonight? Look, I thought he managed the game very well. He, um, you know, he, he's a very dynamic player. Uh, you know, I think the key for us this year with him, you know, in the off season was to say, look, here's some things you can improve on: footwork, taking care of the ball, reading coverages, you know, understanding obviously our offensive scheme, protections, and things like that. He's done a really good job of that, and you know, he has to, you know, stay consistent with that throughout the year. Because, like I said in the very beginning, it's only one game. It's a, it's a look. I'm not, I'm not trying to take anything away from the win. It's a very important win for BC and where we're at. But um, it's just one game, and, and he really played well in the game. And he's got to keep that going. Go to Tom Carroll. Coach, congratulations on the win tonight. Um, so you keep talking about it's one game, it's one game, but you've mentioned to us before, you know, for the city of Boston to really buy in on BC football, you need to win and you need to build a winner. And to get this just one game in this environment, in this spotlight, it's just a huge win for the program. So how do you build off this momentum? I know you have the short week for Duquesne, but then you have Missouri shortly after that. How do you harness what you got here in this big win and, and keep moving? 
Yeah, I think that's the key, right? How do, how do we do that? And I think what we do is we, we, we take it basically one process at a time, really. I'm being honest with you. We got to, you know, get on the bus here, you know, get on the plane, get back at 4.30 in the morning, get some sleep, make sure that we recover tomorrow um, and understand that, you know, we, we got to get back to, you know, class on Wednesday. We got to get back to a lot of different things and, um, you know, just take it really. I know it sounds cliche, but really that's what I preach is one day at a time. It doesn't matter. You got to take it one day at a time and, and really just be disciplined enough in, in every facet of your life, whether it's academically, football wise or in the community. We've got to be able to, to, to get back and, and get back to work and have a good couple of days before, you know, uh, Duquesne comes rolling in here. Graham, go ahead. Yeah, Coach, I know this is not something that is concerned with what's going on on the field, but um, one thing that was really noticeable to us reporters tonight was the just absolutely overwhelming support from alumni of the BC football program on Twitter and social media tonight. We saw guy, you know, people from Doug Flutie to Matt Ryan, Zay Flowers, Christian Mahogany, A.J. Dillon, Justin Simmons, you name it, anybody just tweeting out pretty much constantly throughout the game. Um, I know that's not something you're necessarily concerned with at all right now, uh, but, you know, does this surprise you for the program, getting all these, uh, you know, people to come back and really reach out in that sort of respect? And have you heard from these guys more often? I've, I've spoken to a lot of guys uh, in the offseason. Um, I think pretty much every guy that you just mentioned I've spoken to. I'm, well, Zay, I actually met when I was with the Patriots getting ready for the draft. We brought him in for a pre-draft visit. And, um, you know, all those guys are awesome. We, we have great alums at BC. I have great friends I got text uh, today from, you know, good luck text from Mike Panos, from Stephen Boyd, from Tom McManus, guys from my era um, that, that, that were awesome players here at Boston College when they won. These guys take a lot of pride in BC. And we, I think that's part of what we have to do. We, we've got to play to that pride. And, uh, you know, BC's had a lot of good football players over the years. And, you know, we have to be consistent in, in, in our approach every single day and, and try to keep, continue to make them proud. All right, we'll go to Brett and then to Mac. Congratulations on the first win. I'm sure that's exactly how you uh, drew it up. Um, can you kind of talk about, you know, you guys come out the second half, um, get the get the interception, and then turn that into a touchdown to extend the lead. Can you talk about kind of what the, you know, your guys' thought process was kind of coming out? That's tough. Yeah, I think we did a good job. You know, we talked a lot about halftime and our halftime process um, over the last couple of weeks in preparation for the season, you know, making sure that the coaches we meet first, talk about the adjustments we need to make, maybe a, you know, kind of a call sheet for the second half in all three phases, present that to the players, talk to the players about what they need to go, you know, to get done on the first drive, uh, what plays they can expect, things like that. And then, you know, Max Tucker comes up with a huge play. Um, and that was probably one of the biggest plays of the game because that, that really got us going in the second half. And I think, you know, again, you talk about a guy like Max Tucker, Catholic Memorial, Boston guy, really tough, good football player, really what BC's all about. I was really happy that he got that play because he, he's a very, very hardworking guy that uh, just has a lot of pride in playing for BC. All right, go to Zach. Hi, Coach O'Brien. Um, so Don't sound so excited, Zach. <laughs> uh, anyway, just kidding. So, uh, you know, your uh, your first win, you know, being a a huge upset uh, against Florida State. You know, a team that was, you know, considered by some to be, you know. Snuffed out of the playoffs last year. You know, how do you feel about uh, that being your first win at, as a head coach at BC? Yeah, look, I think it's a really good win, Zach. It's a, I'm, I'm proud of the guys. I'm very proud of them, but it's really just one game. You know, it really is. Like, we have 11 games left, and, and you know, we have to divide it up. We talk to these guys a lot about, you know, 12 one-game seasons. That's how we have to approach it. You know, I talk to him a lot about it. it's not like baseball where there's 162 games or, you know, uh, basketball, there's 82 games, hockey, 82 games in the pros. There's not there's not there's only 12 opportunities. 
So we have to do a good job of trying to take advantage of every single day, every single preparation, and then every single game. And I think that's that's going to be uh, very important for us. But I'm, v I'm very proud of the guys and the way they played tonight, no doubt about it. All right, Matt, go ahead. Hey, Coach, congrats to you and your team. Thank um, you, Matt. Just did you talk about the physicality of your team? I mean, it really was evident you were able to dominate on both sides of the ball, and, and really it looked like you guys – had the experience of a couple games, not not being your first game, being able to get you know tackle really well and get to the ball. Can you just speak to the physicality of your of your team and being prepared? Yeah, that was a big part of the game plan. You know, I think the number one key on on defense was to be able to tackle in space, and I thought our guys did a great job of that. They really the first guy in got these guys on the ground. There's some great athletes at Florida State, and I thought our guys did a really good job of tackling in space, and that was that was a big key. That'll be a big key for us the rest of the year. You know, ball security, taking care of the ball on offense, which we did a decent job of that, and then tackling on defense. That's going to be a big deal moving forward, and I thought they started off doing a good job of that. All right, we've got time for two more. Dan, and then we'll go to finish it up with Tom Carroll. Coach, the Florida State offense came in, uh, you know, with its issues, for lack of a better term, from, from last week. But what was it that this defense from you, were able to do that, that really forced them into a box, made them one-dimensional, and, and forced them, obviously, with the, the long drive to get going. I thought our front played really well, and I think that that in combination with the pressure we were able to get, uh, and then our, our coverage was good. And, and Tim mixed the calls up, which was really good. Uh, and then I, I thought, you know, we, we did a good job stopping a run, right? I don't, I don't think they, they might have rushed for maybe 30 or 40 yards. And so... Uh, we did a great job of that, and, and again, that's something that we have to, we're going to have to continue to do. That's, that's my biggest concern, guys. I'm just going to be honest with you. This is a great win. It's an awesome win for BC, but we got to turn the page, you know, because um, we got to keep it going. It's only game one, and I think that's a big, big point that I'm going to stress to these guys as we travel back to Beantown. Coach, my question was going to be about. Tim Lewis and the game plan he put together. Obviously, the defense came up huge tonight. Seemed like you guys were really focused on forcing DJ to throw the ball out to the boundary, and it seemed like they weren't able to get that offense going. Uh, just talk a little bit about how important it is to have a guy like Tim Lewis on your staff as you're kind of establishing a new culture at Boston College. Yeah, Tim, Tim's a great guy. He does a really good job of connecting with the players. He's a good teacher. Uh, they, they have a lot of confidence in him and his staff. He's, he's got really good guys underneath him with Danny O'Brien, um, Ray Brown, and Jeff Commission, and then the GAs and the analysts. You know, we have you know, Tito Pasqualoni and Tom Jerkovic, Will Blackman. We, we've got a, a strong defensive staff, and, that, and we got good defensive players. And so that combination, you know, we've got to keep that going. The communication between the coaches and the players in a lot of different facets, uh, you know, led by Tim has been really good, and we've got to keep that's got to that's got to sustain week in and week out. Great, thank you very much. We'll have uh, Thomas Castellanos joining us next. Thank you, guys.